tonight, part three of Madison County Strong one year later. Here's Local 5 meteorologist Dave Downey. In the aftermath, lives change forever. I want to warn you, some of the things you're about to hear and see could be difficult to watch. At this time, we can confirm that we have six fatalities, including four adults and two children under the age of five. Two decades, right? You've been here. Don't rank this, but how does it compare to events that you've experienced in the past here in Madison the worst. County? Yeah, yeah, without question, the worst. When the casualties started coming in and um, we were trying to identify them and having to have those difficult conversations with the family members, um, you know, you don't forget those things. Um, remember those conversations forever and. on one side of Carver Road uh, where there was a house on the corner was completely gone. People that were, were running, there were some people bleeding. It was a lot of, a lot of stuff in the air, a lot of debris. I wound up crossing over uh, to the other side of Carver Road where we ran into our first fatality. I need help. What is, what's your name? Don Hogue. Don Hogue? What's, yes. what's, what's your address yes. again? Carver Road. What's I, uh, think my a tornado just came through, and I think I think my my neighbors passed away. Their house is gone. My house is gone. When the deputies uh, were going out and they were giving us the reports, um, it was it was very overwhelming. Um, I myself, I have I've heard of all the damage that was out on Carver Road. I've never went out there. There's no need. No. Can anybody hear me? Hey, I'm with the sheriff's office. We've got help on the way, okay? Just stay with me. The hero's work was just beginning. Hey, we're gonna try to start getting you out, okay? Just hang tight. I remember specifically being in that house and uh, doing what we were doing. And I looked over my shoulder and I've gotten to know him pretty well. He's a volunteer firefighter from Earlham. So he's, not, he's never paid. And now he's not even in his own town. He was here behind me inside this house. And that was, that was powerful. Yeah, that was pretty powerful stuff. Yep, there's three of them. They're all alive, but right here. Like in this corner? It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing to see people coming together who don't always interact with each other, uh, but when we have a mutual goal to, uh, to achieve. It seemed like about three-fourths of the hospital came in. People were called to come in, people came in on their own. Uh, people from the community came in. Uh, there were some providers that weren't affiliated with the hospital. They came in to help out. The night wore on, but restlessness took over. I tried to go to sleep, I couldn't go to sleep. Um, and I think I might have laid down for 10 minutes and I kind of got back up and I went out to Carver. It was dark and it was quiet. Uh, there was no one around, and that's kind of when I realized it wasn't a dream, right? Because when you see stuff like that, you think it's a dream or it just can't be real. But that's when it really sank in for me was that when everyone was gone and it was just dark and you can kind of see what the destruction, uh, that really, that was something that I realized this was, was real. So. Saturday night, watch the flip of the recovery switch before the sun even came up the morning after the tornado. Just incredible, and we want to thank everybody for sharing those very personal stories, a very hard day for them to relive, but we can all learn from that. Absolutely. I yeah. cannot believe it's been a year. I can't either. And, and it's one of those things I think people are going to always remember where they're at mm -hmm. when it went through a 